Encore quelques secondes pour les photos. Just a few more seconds for the photo, please. All right. Thank you very much. If you just can go back to your seat, that'd be great. Thank you so much. We can start. I know there's a lot of questions for you guys, so I'm just going to do a quick presentation of the jury members of the 74th International Film Festival in Cannes. We're going to start by uh, a tout seigneur, tout honneur, number one first, the president of the jury of the 74th Festival, Mr. Spike Lee. <laughs> At the other side of the table, uh, the musician, the singer, the actress, Mylène Farmer. He was here two years ago with a little movie you may have heard of, Parasite, <laughs> Mr. Song Kang Ho. Oh. She was here two years ago with a little movie you may have heard about, <laughs> Mati Diop. Uh, Mélanie Laurent, l'actrice, la réalisatrice, est avec nous, Mélanie. La, la réalisatrice de Little Joe, qui avait valu un prix d'interprétation à Emily Beecham euh, il y a deux ans maintenant, Jessica Osner. Lui, il est né carrément à Cannes, c'était en mai 2009, un petit film s'appelait Un prophète, Tahar Rahim C'est un plaisir d'accueillir l'actrice. It's a pleasure to introduce the actress and now director, Maggie Gyllenhaal. He got a prize of the jury with his movie, Bakurao, Kleber Mendoza Filo. All right, guys, we, we're going to start the questioning. I'm going I'm to ask the first question, if you don't mind. It's a question for... All of you guys, a very simple question, but uh, I know that it's, a, it's always a moving moment. When you got the phone call, the phone call asking you to be in the jury of the Festival de Cannes, what is your reaction? Let's start with you, Monsieur le Président. I have a history here in Cannes. Uh, 25 years ago, a quarter of a century, I was here with Nola Darlin in 1986, and I made several appearances, and it's an honor to be uh, here. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. We're going to go this way, Clever, if you don't mind. I, I mean, tonight is going to be my, my first time in a cinema in 15 months. Oh, wow. So thank you, Thierry. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie? That's the same for me. I haven't been in a movie theater in almost two years, yeah, 15 months. Um, and the question was, how did I get the news? The reaction when you got the news. Oh, the reaction. Um, I mean, I, uh, I had actually just finished the mix on my film and had just called up a hotel with my husband and gone to the beach because I'd been working so hard and I got the email like the day I arrived at the beach and uh, the whole rest of our three days stolen at the beach was filled with fantasies of being here and seeing all the movies that are going to come out this year and uh, I also am really delighted and honored to have been invited. Yeah. <coughs> Bonjour. Alors moi, quand j'ai eu le coup de fil, d'abord, je me suis senti très gâté, une fois de plus. Et euh, donc, euh, merci Thierry Frémaux et merci le Festival de Cannes pour, pour cet honneur. Et la règle veut qu'on attende 24 heures pour répondre. Alors moi, je lui dis, bah non, je peux répondre maintenant. Pour attendre 24 heures. Non, 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 tu attends, si. Voilà, et donc, euh, je suis très heureux, moi aussi, parce que je ne suis pas allé dans un cinéma depuis très longtemps. Et d'avoir la joie et l'honneur de me retrouver à regarder de si grands films en si belle compagnie. Ici, au palais, ben, ben ça fait plaisir. Mmh. Jessica uh, when I received the email that I was invited to be part of the jury, 
I was really very, very happy and pleased and I felt honored, especially also because I had uh, just a few days before looked at all the films that are going to be in the competition. And back then I thought, oh, I want to see that film, I want to see this film, oh, this, when I can, when will I see this film? Uh, now I see them all, so I'm really lucky and happy. Mélanie. Euh, bonjour. Non, j'ai l'impression que c'est une réaction en, à plusieurs paliers. Il y a d'abord le coup de fil où effectivement on n'attend pas 24 heures. On dit oui tout de suite. Et puis après on a beaucoup de mal à réaliser. Et même hier soir, quand on a tous dîné ensemble, <rire> on a peut-être un peu plus réalisé qu'on allait partager ces grands moments euh, et ce festival très particulier et presque historique et qui nous ramène et dans les salles et qui nous ramène euh, un peu dans la vie et et qui, qui, est, voilà, qui, est, qui est particulier pour nous tous. Et donc, on est encore plus honoré de faire partie de celui-là, je crois. Mathieu, vous n'avez pas voulu attendre les 24 heures non plus Comment Vous n'avez pas attendu les 24 heures non plus Non, non j ai, j ai, j ai, quand j'ai reçu l'appel, j'étais profondément touchée. Et euh, par la confiance, euh, voilà, par la, 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 la confiance exprimée. Et, et je me suis sentie extrêmement euh, voilà, chanceuse à l'idée de de vivre cette expérience avec euh, le jury que je ne connaissais pas encore à l'époque, que j'ai découvert il y, a, il, y a, il y a peu de temps, et je suis vraiment euh, extrêmement heureuse, honorée et ravie à l'idée de, de, de vivre cette expérience qui, voilà, qui, qui commence ce soir. Et je ne sais pas encore à quoi elle va, elle va ressembler, mais on est, on est tous extrêmement euh, heureux d'être là. Voilà. Well, when I first got the uh, email uh, for to invite me to the festival. I was wondering, uh, could the festival really take place because of the immense threat posed by the pandemic? And the fact that we're all here together, I think it's a miracle. And because of that, it's even more of an honor to be here. Milen? Et pour ma part, c'est un moment unique dans une vie, je crois qu'on ne peut pas refuser. Je suis moi-même très, très honorée et très heureuse de partager tout cela avec vous tous. Et toutes, et, euh, et merci à Thierry Frémaux et, et toute son équipe. <laughs> On va démarrer les questions. On va commencer les questions, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Monsieur Spike Lee. <laughs> How are you? I, and you mentioned your history with the festival. I remember when Roger Ebert saw your film here in 1989. He said that he thought he had seen such an important movie about race in America that he left the screening with tears in his eyes. And he threatened to, when you didn't win a prize, he threatened to boycott the festival. But today, you are the master diplomat and ambassador as the head of the jury. What is going to be your process with this international jury in making a decision? And how are you doing? It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I'm great. Thank and I you. want you to know that uh, I have a very special place in my heart for, for Roger, and you know that. And uh, that was not a popular decision. What he, what he felt about the film, you know, a lot of people felt that, you know, especially the, the American press said this film would start race riots all across America. I mean, you could uh, Google. And um, since you brought up Do the Right Thing, a couple weeks ago was the 32nd anniversary of the film. That film came out in 1989. I wrote it in 1988. When you see Brother Eric Garner, when you see King George Floyd murdered, lynched, 
I think of Ray Rahim. And you would think and hope that 30 some motherfucking years later, the black people stop being hunted down like the animals. So, I'm glad to be here though. <laughs> Thank you. In the first row. Hi, I'm nope. Sabina. You don't I'm, mind signing up? Yeah. Oh, okay. so sorry. I'm Sabina from German Television. Um, I'm still touched from by, by this first question. I'm a little out of my program. But uh, I'd like to know what the Cannes Film Festival, Spike Lee, uh, means to you personally. Would you say your career as a filmmaker was launched by the Cannes Film Festival? I would like to know also what you think about the future of cinema. Your, your, for your last film, you were going with uh, Netflix. And do you think the streaming platforms will help or kill cinema? Do we still know cinema as we know it here in Cannes on the big screen in 10, 20 years? Cinema and uh, streaming platforms can coexist. At one time, there was a thinking that TV was going to kill cinema. So this stuff is not new. It's all cycle. And uh, it's well documented that she's going to have it when it appeared in Cannes Film Festival was a launching pad for my career. I like to say that we have a brilliant jury up here, so I'm not taking any more questions. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be a hog or anything like that. You know, we're all equal. So please respect that and ask our esteemed jury other questions. Thank you very much. Do we have a question over there? Hi, it's Jason Gruber from That Shelf in Canada. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to use freedom of the press and ask you a question, but a question to every member of the jury. First time I was here in 1996, you took over the American Pavilion to watch a Knicks game. I've seen you interview uh, Elton John. I've seen you be celebrated for Black Klansmen. I want to hear stories about from you and all the members of the jury about what this festival means, films you've discovered here, things you've loved about this festival, and what it is like being here as filmmakers, as artists, as collaborators, watching the works of other people and being able to gauge with them. So Mr. Lee, to start, <laughs> tell me what you love about Cannes and everybody else, tell me what you love well, about this well, festival. Well, well Cannes is the, the world's greatest film festival. No disrespect to any other film festival. One of my most memorable moments in Cannes had nothing to do with film. It was back in the 90s when New York Knicks were good. <laughs> And we were in the world, we were in the NBA Finals. So I flew from Nice to New York for a game and came back. Knicks lost that game. <laughs> Anybody wants to uh, add something about the things they like about Can? Why not? Please, jump. <laughs> Go, Jessica. I would like to say, Maybe only that uh, what I really love about Cannes is that it's about filmmaking. It's not only about, uh, about entertainment. Um, it's also about like inventing new ideas in films, inventing film language, and, and trying to bring in new ideas about cinematography or being filmmaker. Yeah Somehow developing specific film languages. This is something that I find incredibly interesting and sometimes it is even entertaining but sometimes it's not and then it's still interesting for me and that is what I like about Cannes. Ah. Madame Cannes, pour plein de raisons, ça va pas être très original mais je suis né ici, on a pu le dire, donc c'est un moment mémorable, très très fort, que j'oublierai pas, mais surtout l'importance du festival de Cannes, c'est quand même quelque chose de fou qui peut vraiment changer la vie des films d'acteurs, d'actrices, de scénaristes. Et ça, il n'y a aucun autre endroit au monde qui le fait. Et euh, pour cette raison, ça fait continuer de rêver euh, tous les jeunes enfants, euh, les jeunes petites filles, les petits garçons, qui rêvent un jour euh, voilà, d'être acteurs ou réalisateurs ou scénaristes. Et pour ça, vraiment, je pense que euh, voilà, euh, ça mérite d'être célébré chaque année euh, le plus possible. Alors, 
I saw a, a friend of mine showed me a picture recently of Jean Moreau dancing on uh, the tables. Well, I don't know if she was dancing, but that's how I imagined it in like 1956 or something. And um, after skipping last year, I kind of hope this year might be a little like that. It's all dance on the table, no? <laughs> Anybody else? Je peux. Alors moi, je peux parler de un immense souvenir de Cannes qui était la récompense à Jane Campion, qui fut la première femme à recevoir la Palme d'Or. Voilà, j'étais très très ému, indépendamment de ce film qui est un chef-d'œuvre. Voilà. C'est tout. <laughs> if, I, if I may, if I may add something, Claire, please. No, I just like to say that. For many, many years, I, I came to this room as a journalist, as, an, as a film critic, and my first time in Cannes was in 1999. <coughs> I told uh, Spike last night, one of the early films I saw in Cannes was Summer of Sam at the Kanzen. And uh, yeah, just to give you an idea of how amazing and the experience of being here with these incredible people. Now, if I... Melanie, do you want to say something? Moi, je me rappelle de l'émotion d'avoir vu, pour plein de films d'ailleurs, le mien une fois, mais aussi plein d'autres films, les équipes de techniciens qui viennent accompagner les films, qui viennent accompagner les réalisateurs et les réalisatrices. Et je trouve ça tellement émouvant de voir arriver son équipe partout de France et parfois de l'étranger et d'avoir la possibilité, et je ne suis pas sûre que d'autres festivals puissent le permettre, d'avoir, de monter avec, avec toute son équipe et tous les gens qui ont participé à ce film, parce qu'on ne fait pas un film tout seul. Et, et ça, c'est un peu magique, de, de vivre ce moment d'émotion pure et de le vivre avec son équipe et de les voir tous habillés très beaux, parce que c'est aussi un festival glamour et qui fait rêver aussi pour ça et, et qui mélange un peu tout. Voilà. Oui, c'est vrai, mais cette année, c'est aussi très spécial. Je veux It's, uh, we all know the, the importance of this festival. We all know that it's not just can, it's a restart, it's a reboost, it's a relaunch of the, uh, the industry, the glam, the movies, the cinephilia, uh, everything. Do you guys uh, realize that? Do you guys realize that uh, it's even more important than, than we can used to, used to be this year? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I think I think we do. I think we really feel the, this very special uh, texture texture of, of history. And uh, yesterday night, while we were meeting each other and, and having dinner, I expressed my feeling that um, this shift from a century to another, and that uh, I felt it was really the first um, edition of a, obviously a new era. And of course, we should not put too much pressure on the films and only be looking at the films like, okay, which end century? So we're going to look at film through these very um, deep and, and heavy circumstances. We also have to keep the, the pleasure and the, and the disponibility and, the, and the, the, um, to, to let ourselves just being surprised by experiencing new anything, any gesture that, that comes in. But obviously we've been through in many dimensions through a lot of um, very deep and um, profound changes. A lot of fragilities and, 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 and failure had, had been revealed and, uh, and I'm sure that each of us, both intim intimately and, and, and politically, are, will look at this film charged of all these new lines um, moving. And uh, so it's a lot of dimensions I feel to, to to take on because uh, so much is going on. Uh, and I guess that also our, each of our um, relationship to cinema is also changing because we haven't seen much, because it's also very particular to watch so many, like a wave of cinema after a quite uh, absence of it. So it's, it, it's a lot, but uh, I hope we will still try to be as much present and and uh, receptive as possible. I think we have a question over there. Bonjour, je suis Tiziana Rico de la Télévision Autrichienne. J'ai une question pour Jessica Hausner. Um, vous avez déjà dit um, que vous, avez cette, vous étiez ici comme réalisatrice avec votre film. Maintenant, vous, êtes, vous faites partie de la jury. Comment c'est ce nouveau rôle pour vous 
Et c'est possible, peut-être vous pouvez répondre en allemand, s'il vous plaît. Ah. Yes, uh, is it, will it be translated? You don't mind translating in English afterwards? Uh, ah, OK. <laughs> uh, another job. <laughs> okay. Job, yeah. um, okay, also erst auf Deutsch. Ich, um, ich finde, das sind wirklich äh, zwei Seiten derselben Medaille. Ich, wenn ich Filme mache, bin ich auch gleichzeitig Zuseherin. Also ich frage mich, indem ich einen Film mache, frage ich mich zugleich, wie wirkt der Film auf die Zuseher. So I'm saying that um, it's two sides of one medal. If I'm, a, I'm making a film, I'm also at the same time trying to imagine what the spectator might think of what I'm doing right now. So I'm, at the same time, I'm doing the film, I'm making a film, but I'm also... This, I'm also the spectator of it. And so it's very, uh, actually two tasks that sort of belong together. And now being part of the jury, I've, the, the juries I've been in before always also helped me to better reflect on my own work because reflecting on other mm. directors' works is of course sort of, um, uh, it's improving my own machine <laughs> in my head and in my heart. It, brings new ideas and it makes me also develop new perspectives. Mm. Also die Male, in denen ich früher in einer Jury war, war es auch so, dass es mich sehr inspiriert hat, weil ich dann natürlich auch über mein eigenes Filmemachen nachdenke, indem ich die Werke der Kollegen und Kolleginnen sehe und mit den anderen Jurymitgliedern äh, diskutiere. Also es ist inspirierend und ich entwickle dabei auch Ideen und ähm, Gedanken zum Filmemachen. Thank you, danke. <lacht> First of all. Um, hello, I'm Anena Bakradze from Georgia, uh, from Republic of Georgia, and I'm quite nervous because I want to share a very sad story with you. I have a, a question to Monsieur le Président, uh, to you, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Madame yeah. Gyllenhaal, and to uh, my favorite director, Clever Mendoza Filho. But I don't have a question uh, for you as a director or actress or actors. I have a question for you as an activist and fighters, big fighters um, against violence. Um, um, the day when I arrived here in Cannes, um, in my country, uh, my country, Georgia, experienced uh, violence and unbelievable facts of human rights violation. Uh, July 5th um, had to be a day of LGBTQR pride in Tbilisi. Um, Ultranationalist and ultra-religion groups packed and financed by Russian soft power um, uh, uh, raided more than 50 journalists and cameramen of Georgian TV, print, radio and online media outlets who were just covering Tbilisi pride. Um, they were attacked and beaten, broke equipment, and unfortunately, police did not detain any of them while being violent. The government was silent as well. Um, and uh, some priests from Georgian church backed violent groups. Tbilisi Pride was cancelled, and hundreds of LGBTQR people uh, could not use their constitutional right to express themselves. Therefore, let me use this Cannes Film Festival platform uh, to say to the world that Georgia's population wants to be part of civilized wor world. And I have a question. Can you experience, uh, can you share your experience as an activist? Because sometimes we fighters, uh, young fighters from Georgia, young activists, um, we don't have enough um, power and um, uh, enough effort to continue fighting against uh, against Russia, against the government who is silent. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Anybody wants to comment? Uh, to, to, to maybe to extend the question, Kleber, to you. Uh, it's not easy to make a, a movies in Brazil today. Uh, how to, uh, to, to resist? Well, that's a very, that's a very tough question, of course. Um, um, right now, in Brazil, we have reached uh, half a million dead with the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, we know from technical data that if the government had acted uh, accordingly, 350,000 people would have been saved. 
So I think one way of resisting is, is, is passing information around and, and talking and discussing. Um, interesting, because uh, I, I think uh, I could mention the, what's, going, ha what's happening now at the Brazilian Cinematheque. The Brazilian Cinematheque has been closed uh, for just over a year now. Uh, 90,000 titles, uh, 230,000 reels of film and television tapes. Uh, all the technicians and experts have been fired. And this is a very clear uh, demonstration of contempt for culture and for cinema. And I thought I should mention this because we're at the Cannes Film Festival and we all love film here. And uh, I think this is also a temple, a temple of memory and, and preservation. So some, some of my non-Brazilian friends say, what can we do? And I say, talk about it, discuss it, write about it. Um, um, you know, talk about it on your podcast. Maybe call a few people in government and say, and ask, why, why are you doing this? So I thought I should get this one out. Thank you. I want to thank you for spreading that information. I, think, I don't think I'm the only one to not know of the situation in Georgia, and uh, this world's run by gangsters. Agent Orange, his guy in Brazil, and Putin. That's it, they're gangsters, and they're gonna do whatever they wanna do, have no morals, no scruples, and that's the world we live in, and we have to speak out against gangsters like that. But, but thank you for, I did not know, I don't, and again, I'm repeating myself, I don't think I'm the only one that did not know of the dire situation in, uh, in Georgia. And so thank you for standing up and sharing that with the world press. And so now it's on the journalists here to spread the word. You just heard it. Do your research. I mean, you, you go, I mean, if you go right, it's not just about, if you go right, you go right. It's not just criticizing movies. You criticize world gangsters, too. I, I would just love to, I know you, I, I was not part of the person you were um, proposing to react. And I think it's very uh, brave from you to, to uh, express yourself about this terrible situation. And, um, but I must admit, I, for me, it also um, points a question, which is uh, activism versus filmmaking. And I feel that it's uh, more and more a bit divided and uh, put apart. And I think that around this table, uh, there might be filmmakers that have a more, uh, articulated or demonstrative relationship to activism. But um, I think it's important to keep in mind that cinema can be one of the most powerful political tool and that uh, it's extremely important that activists keep doing the work, spreading the messages of, and resist. But I feel that we have to also be careful not to um, oppose um, different forms of resistance and activism. I feel that sometimes cinema is a bit um, uh, not enough uh, uh, measured uh, in its power of um, resisting. And, uh, but it just shows um, situation in a very, it can show situation in a very deep way, putting you in relationship with uh, complexities of any kind of forms of um, oppression or, uh, and, and I think it's, um, I've been thinking of this political aspect a lot uh, for our situation and I think we're going to have to deal with uh, this pressure on being more, of course, exigent with the very, very delicate political presence but also give space to, to cinema and art to express itself as uh, a very singular way of being political. And, um, and not, I don't want cinema to be taken hostage by 
uh, social subjects, I think the most important for cinema is not what we talk about, but how we express it. And I think it's, voilà, it's important to, I just wanted to jump on this, but thank you so much for your words. I also just want to respond, since you asked me to. Um, I don't feel equipped to give any kind of advice on activism to a Georgian activist and journalist. But I would like to think about your question, and I would be happy to talk to you in a couple of days after I've gotten a chance to think about it and learn a little bit more about it. But I do want to say, I think um, cinema um, has so often been inherently political, not in a kind of political correct way where you aren't allowed to say uh, things that um, cross a line, but in an emotional way. And watching you sit here crying, um, I mean, I think, I think without even meaning to, if we listen both to our minds and to our hearts and make movies, that they will often be really political, unless we're shut down and disassociative in some kind of weird way, which obviously many, many people are. But if we're not, I think we end up saying things political by being truthful about our experience in the world. I guess we have a question over there, gentlemen. Uh, Jérôme Barmelin for uh, LCI.fr. I have a question for Mil Mylène Farmer. Uh, Mi Mylène, je suis là. <laughs> Mylène, uh, vous êtes une, une femme puissante sur scène, mais dans la vraie vie, on, on vous connaît, on, on imagine plus discrète, voire secrète. Est-ce qu'il a fallu un peu vous faire violence pour participer à un événement comme celui-là Et par rapport à tout ce qui vient d'être dit, est-ce qu'en tant qu'artiste, vous voulez profiter d'un événement comme Cannes pour faire passer des messages alors, me faire violence, oui et non. C'est vrai que je suis plutôt secrète, réservée. Mais comme je le disais précédemment, j'ai dit oui tout de suite parce que c'est quelque chose d'extraordinaire de, de, dans le sens premier du terme. Donc, j'avais vraiment très, très envie de, de participer à, à ce merveilleux festival. Et quant à faire passer des messages, euh, je pense que je le fais à ma façon dans mes chansons puisque j'écris moi-même mes chansons. Euh, voilà, je suis sensible à ce que cette femme a dit, bien évidemment, mais euh, je réserve mes opinions pour le coup. Okay, we, on, a, on a malheureusement just one more question, so it will be. I, I think it was first. Okay. Hi, <laughs> Leven Trio from Belgium. Nice to meet you all. Um, I have a question for the women that you're in the jury, or also for the men. You can decide for yourself. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time in history that the jury uh, has a majority of female members. And I just wanted to hear from you if you think that's important and, and also why that it's maybe important. How will it have an impact on the process of the jury? Um, what will it change? Thank you. Maggie? Um, I, I think it's important. I think, um, personally, I think when women are listening to themselves and really expressing themselves, even inside of a, a very, very male culture, we make movies differently. We tell stories differently. And I think women, um, in my experience, I, you know, I used to watch movies, you know, sometimes they had women in them, rarely were they made by women. And often I had this like sort of extra muscle, and I wonder if you guys relate to this, where, um, where, like, okay, you're watching a movie about a, a, a male lead character or even a woman lead character but expressed by a man, fundamentally kind of a masculine take on it, and you have this extra little muscle you have to exercise to turn it into something that as a woman or as a young girl I could relate to. And I remember, for example, seeing the piano and, like, having some kind of different experience where... I hadn't had to use that muscle. Like, it just went in straight. And um, I think I was in high school, and I, I was so deeply inspired, and um, still. <laughs> and I do think that a majority of women may, I'm curious to see 
may choose different movies, may respond differently. I certainly think we make different movies and write different novels and different songs. I absolutely think that. And I'm so curious to see what happens with this new formulation and respect. <laughs> Jessica? Um, thank you, Maggie. I would like to say I, I agree with everything you said. And I would like to add also that, because you mentioned that uh, more women are in the jury, also more female directors are being selected for the competition, I think. And all this um, is, I think, mirroring that our society is now ready for a certain change that <laughs> should have happened earlier, I think. But some things take a lot of time, and I think this takes a lot of time to also change our images in our heads that we have of each other. And I would like to tell a very short story about a female bus driver in Vienna in the 1950s. Um, there was the first time that a woman was actually conducting a public bus. And some of the guests in the bus left the bus because they were afraid that the female conductor was not able to drive the bus. And I think we have gone very far from since then. I mean, it's 70 years later. But still, I think some of those fears of those guests in the bus are still in our heads. And I am very hope, hoping very much that we get rid of those biases more and more. Il y a deux choses hystériques. C'est pas mal. Il y a deux choses historiques. Cette année à Cannes, il y a évidemment euh, euh, qu'il y ait qu plus de femmes dans le jury pour la première fois. Et en même temps, en parallèle de ça, la première fois que le festival de Cannes devient un peu plus écolo. Et je crois qu'il y a peut-être une relation à faire entre ces deux choses importantes de cette année-là, de cette édition-là, entre les femmes et la nature, entre ce qu'on ne connaît pas, ce qu'on juge, ce qu'on détruit, ce qu'on empêche de parler, ce qu'on empêche de respirer, ce qu'on empêche... Euh, euh, de conduire des bus, ou en tout cas d'avoir peur. Euh, tout ce qui fait peur euh, est incompris et donc euh, oppressé. Et ça, c'est pour la nature. Et je pense que vous avez compris euh, qu'on fait aussi évidemment la même chose avec les femmes. Alors, ce serait merveilleux que ce festival qui donne euh, la possibilité de faire, en tout cas, sa part de colibri, c'est-à-dire euh, de regarder euh, un incendie euh, et de voir des hectares de forêt se faire détruire et de venir... Euh, mettre une petite goutte d'eau pour essayer d'éteindre euh, l'incendie. C'est ce que fait le festival aujourd'hui. On essaie de rouler euh, avec moins d'empreintes de carbone. Euh, on essaie de ne pas avoir de plastique. Euh, alors évidemment, c'est une goutte d'eau pour éteindre l'incendie. Mais c'est faire sa part. Voilà, c'est ça, faire sa part aujourd'hui. C'est le minimum, mais il faut quand même le faire. Et je rêve, pour nous tous, qu'on soit le premier festival et le dernier où il y aura un débat sur les femmes et je ne sais pas, je suis un peu naïve, hein, mais si on pouvait laisser respirer cette planète et res laisser respirer les femmes en même temps, et qu'il n'y ait plus de débat, et qu'il n'y ait plus d'absurdité, d'hérésie, de, de folie, alors ce serait merveilleux. Et c'est merveilleux qu'un festival qui va aussi proposer des, des documentaires, des films forts sur l'écologie, parce que finalement le cinéma c'est aussi un art qui transforme les gens et qui les pousse à changer, parce que ça donne l'impulsion et parce que ça émeut. Et le cinéma il est magnifique pour ça. Et voilà, je crois qu'il ne faut jamais oublier qu'il y a ces deux combats et, et qui sont obligatoirement euh, euh, ensemble. Et l'écologie, d'ailleurs, c'est ça, c'est quand tout est relié. Voilà. Eh bien, Mathilde, pardon. Ah oui. <rire> pardon, pardon, pardon je suis une femme aussi, je veux parler. <rire> J'aimerais entendre aussi les, 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 les hommes dessus, mais sur ce sujet. Mais, euh, non, mais je, 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 je suis sensible à tout ce qui vient d'être dit et c'est vrai que je pense qu'on a tous... Euh, toutes, tous plus ou moins hâte de, aussi de, je ne sais pas si on la vivra de notre vivant, d'arriver à la phase où il ne sera plus question de mettre femme avant réalisatrice, ou, enfin, euh, woman avant director, ou, 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 parce que c'est vrai que c'est euh, un passage, en effet, qui semble un peu obligé d'insister, de, 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 de révéler, de pointer, de... de, 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 de vérifier qu'il y ait quand même un minimum d'équilibre euh, et en même temps euh, euh, moi ce qui me semble important euh, c'est que le comité de sélection et le jury soient le plus équilibré possible de façon à ce que justement quand les films soient vus il soit presque plus question de s'intéresser à 
au sexe ou, ou, ou à l'origine du film, euh, du réalisateur ou de la réalisatrice, et que quand on est face à un film, on puisse se débarrasser de ces questions et se, 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 ne, ne, voilà, être, que, à nouveau que le cinéma soit le sujet euh, et, 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 euh, et qu'il soit aussi, euh, pas débarrassé, mais, mais euh, libéré de ces... De, 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 toutes ces, de toutes ces questions. Euh, je ne sais pas si je le dis clairement, mais euh, c'est vrai que c'est euh, toujours, euh, même aujourd'hui encore pour moi, euh, pas évident d'être, euh, en tant que cinéaste, en tant qu'artiste, d'être en permanence euh, ramené à ces questions-là. J'accepte qu'il faille en parler, j'accepte de, 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 qu'il faille en, en passer par là, et, et, et je trouve, euh, et on sent à quel point notre présence est à la fois liée au travail de chacune, au parcours de chacune, et à une évolution euh, sociétale évidente. Et c'est tous ces, toutes ces travaux et ces, et ces euh, engagements qui, qui convergent. C'est ça qui est important, c'est que chacun le fasse à sa manière euh, et, avec, euh, et, et, et avec chacun de, de, de nos outils, à travers le cinéma, à travers une, une, une manière plus activiste et, 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 et directe de, de faire les choses. Mais euh, je pense qu'il faut chacun, chaque, que chacune le fasse avec l'outil approprié. Sinon, ça peut devenir un peu formaté et politiquement correct aussi. Et condescendant parfois aussi de choisir des films pour, pour des raisons politiquement extérieures, or qu'on a envie qu'un film soit choisi pour le regard singulier qu'il apporte au monde. Quelqu'un d'autre Anybody else All right, then, uh, I want to thank the uh, members of the 74th International Film Festival of Cannes, or as Mathis said, the first one of the new <laughs> era. Thank you to Mylène Farmer, Song Tango, <laughs> Mélanie Laurent, Jessica Osner, Tara Rai, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Keber Mendoza-Filo, and Monsieur le Président, Spike Lee. <laughs>